Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. It's great living in a house. It's much better than living outside. While buildings are great, a huge downside is the fact that most houses look very similar on the outside. It would be great if I knew somebody who lives in a house that looks just like that. That way, I'd never forget where they live or forget how to get there. Oh, look at that. Squidward Tentacles, one of the most famous characters of Spongebob. The conceited, cranky octopus who thinks he's talented but actually isn't very. Squidward is one of the main characters in the show and is seen pretty often. He often gets hurt or humiliated, sometimes when he actually deserves it, sometimes for no fucking reason at all. Squidward is very relatable with his cranky attitude, but that's not the topic for today. No, not at all. Today, we're going to be talking about something else that often comes up when fans talk about Squidward. And the thing that is arguably discussed in relation to Squidward the most is... His clarinet. But his house is a close second. Squidward's house is one of the most notable locations in the series. It's located right in between Spongebob and Patrick's houses. As a result, he's a victim of Spongebob and Patrick's shenanigans. Squidward's house is called a Moai, which is a statue on Easter Island that sort of resembles a human head, but more so looks like a tiki. Hence why it's also commonly referred to as an Easter Island head. Even Squidward himself has referred to his house as an Easter Island head, most notably in episode 28, SB129. It has a Polynesian architectural style. According to a book from 2004 called Spongebob Exposed, The Insider's Guide to Spongebob Squarepants, it states that Squidward's house was made out of volcanic rock. Squidward's house has been seen as early as the Spongebob theme song. When the camera goes underwater and shows Spongebob's pineapple, Squidward's house is shown on the left side of the screen. Ever since this shot right here, Squidward's house design is consistent. On the outside. The inside is inconsistent at times. The exterior of Squidward's house is a blue moai with a Polynesian architectural style. You already said that. Alright, alright, I'm sorry! There are two windows on the second floor of his house that represent Squidward's eyes, the door at the bottom to represent his mouth, and some stones on the front and sides to represent his nose, eyebrows, and ears. In episode 1, Help Wanted, some tiki poles are seen behind Squidward's house. This was the only time they were seen. In the very next episode, episode 2, Reef Blower, they were gone. Squidward's address is 122 Conch Street. Inside, there are always two floors. On the first floor, there is a kitchen and a dining room in the back and a living room in the front. The living room has a coffee table, couch, TV, and a bookshelf with some jazz records. There is a bathroom on the first floor, only seen a couple times, most notably in episode 197, House Fancy. In episode 7, Plankton, Squidward's bedroom is on the first floor, as shown when Spongebob breaks through the wall in this episode. In a couple of the earlier episodes, like episode 23, Squidward the Unfriendly Ghost, there's an elevator that can go to the second floor, and of course, a curved staircase that also goes to the second floor. Speaking of which, the second floor consists of the bedroom in every episode after Plankton, a bathroom that contains a bathtub slash shower that's right outside his bedroom, a back room shown in Squidward the Unfriendly Ghost that has terrible wallpaper, a gallery where Squidward plays his clarinet and works on his self-portraits, and a library which was shown in episodes 153, Squidwood, and 245, I Heart Dancing. Squidward's bedroom has a canopy bed, a nightstand, and a closet. In episode 25, Employee of the Month, the aforementioned closet contained an absurdly large amount of alarm clocks. The room where the two windows are located are inconsistent at times. Most episodes, like episode 206, Slide with Those Stooges, show both of the windows are in the gallery. However, there were some examples showing at least one of those windows in a different location. For example, episode 122, Have You Seen This Snail, and 390, Whirly Brains, shows one of the two front windows in the bathroom. There are a handful of episodes where there's a little garden in Squidward's backyard where Squidward raises a garden. There's also a garden shed with stereotypical garden tools that was shown in episodes 256, The Curse of Bikini Bottom, and 426, Bunny Hunt. The exterior of his house is blue in the day, and at night it's kind of a dark pink color. His living room has green walls and a pink floor, his gallery has red walls and a gray floor, the bedroom has blue walls, and the bathroom has blue and pink walls. The interior of the elevator is gray. A popular thought among fans is that Squidward's house has a life of its own. This is seen due to a couple times where Squidward's house was shown moving or speaking, usually for comedic effect. 
There are some instances of this scattered throughout the series. The very first example was from episode 69, The Secret Box, where Patrick said that nobody can know what's in his secret box, not even Squidward's house, and the house is shown leaning down to peek at the box and then return to its normal position when it's spotted. The next example is from episode 124, Good Neighbors, where the house comes alive, grows limbs, and goes on a rampage, destroying Bikini Bottom. I personally wasn't sure about this one because it only comes alive because Squidward buys a security system for his house, which ends up going haywire, meaning it wouldn't have happened without the security system. Moving on, episode 126, Funny Pants, shows Squidward's house covering its ears with hands that come out of the ground and glaring when SpongeBob is crying. I'd say that's the best proof so far. The house slightly changed expressions, and it has hands. In episode 246, Gross Spout, Mr. Krabs steals food to feed Pearl, and after he takes from Squidward's house, it says, Oh well, I needed to lose a little weight anyway. Scratch that, the house talked, it's official. In episode 298, A Friendly Game, Squidward's house covers its ears again, this time from SpongeBob's alarm clock. However, this time he doesn't glare like Funny Pants. Also in Funny Pants, the hands are blue, just like his house. In a friendly game, the hands are made out of sand instead. In episode 417, there's a sponge in my soup. At the end, Squirt's house screams and yells the word, HIPPIES! The latest example is from episode 426, Bunny Hunt, where Squidward's house coughs and screams as a result of Squidward accidentally leaving a roast in the oven for too long after Squidward finds a sea bunny in his backyard. There's also a Nick Magazine comic called House of Squidward where a buried swish brings Squidward's house to life and it makes it grow limbs. It's brought to rest after Spongebob, Patrick, and Squidward disguise Spongebob's house as a girl to lure Squidward's house back to its original spot and turn the switch off. To me, this is only a magazine comic, so I'm personally not sure if they count as canon, but I only mentioned it because it's a part of this list. Now that I've supported this theory, I'm going to move on. A small inconsistency with Squidward's house is that sometimes it's not seen in between Swanjob and Patrick's houses. Off the top of my head, there are three examples of this error. These occasions are episode 69, The Secret Box, 113, Missing Identity, and 328, In Spongiac. Maybe it somehow got up and walked away on its own, and that's why it wasn't there. Moving along, it's time to talk about some good old fashioned destruction. Oh, 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 oh yes. Bikini Bottom and most locations are prone to getting destroyed, and Squidward's house is no different. Now we're going to go over every time where Squidward's house was destroyed, but first, here's a rule for discussing that. My little made up rules here are, whenever the house was smashed to bits in some way, or removed from its usual spot is what constitutes as a destruction in this instance. Not if Squidward legitimately loses it for some reason. I also will only be counting exterior damage, not interior damage. If you're wondering why I'm counting times when the house was removed, here's my response. Why not? With that out of the way, here are the times when Squidward's house was destroyed as of season 12. Starting off, in episode 4, Bubble Stand, the giant bubble Squidward blew engulfed his house and removed it from the ground, and the bubble popped and the house landed back where it was. In episode 7, Plankton, Spongebob burst through the walls while being controlled by Plankton. In episode 8, Naughty Nautical Neighbors, the house exploded after Spongebob and Patrick laughed out a lot of bubbles. In episode 27, I Was a Teenage Gary, the snail Spongebob chases Squidward, causing the house to jump around and flip over, causing a lot of stuff to get broken. In episode 33, The Paper, Squidward removed the house from its usual spot and gave it to Spongebob to get the paper he wanted. In episode 53, Squidville, Spongebob and Patrick sucked up the pieces of Squidward's house and blew them out, blasting Squidward's house to bits. In episode 65, Shanghai, the anchor of the Flying Dutchman ship hit the side of Squidward's house. In episode 117, Pranks a lot, Squidward ran through the walls when he thought Spongebob and Patrick were ghosts. The next instance is debatable. In episode 124, Good Neighbors, after the house is put back in its normal spot, the door is down, but the rest of the structure is intact. You could count that if you want to. If you don't want to, that's fine. I included it because... Why not? In episode 149, Rule of Dumb, Patrick had the house removed to build a ferris wheel. 
in episode 197, House Fancy. The house was destroyed as a result of a vacuum cleaner exploding after it was overloaded. In episode 209, Giant Squidward, the house was used as bait for Squidward when he was giant. In episode 226, Squid's visit, Squidward left a casserole in the oven while he was at Spongebob's house, causing his house to catch on fire. In episode 269, the monster who came to Bikini Bottom, Rarg, the monster, picked up the house and threw it, and it shattered. In episode 274, Sponge Kano, a pipe burst and blasted the house to the top of Mount Bikini Bottom, blocking the volcano. In episode 276, That Sinking Feeling, SpongeBob and Patrick were playing underground and accidentally caused Squidward's house to sink. In episode 292, Big Sister Sam, Patrick's sister Sam pushed the house very far from its usual spot took some pieces from the house, chewed them up, and spit them out like bullets and destroyed Squidward's house. In episode 298, A Friendly Game, SpongeBob and Patrick accidentally destroyed it while looking for their golf balls. In episode 311, Murray Man Begins, the house was blown away during a strong windstorm. In episode 346, Squid Baby, Patrick lifted up part of the road to stop a truck from hitting Squidward, but the truck ended up destroying Squidward's house. In episode 347, Little Yellow Book, Squidward's house was repossessed and taken away after Squidward read Spongebob's diary. In episode 379, Sold, Spongebob and Patrick flipped Squidward's house upside down and then it crumbled to bits at the end. In episode 418, Man Ray Returns, Spongebob and Patrick fought Man Ray inside Squidward's house, destroying a lot of Squidward's items. After they tried to fix it with their saliva, the house collapsed when Squidward returned. In episode 426, Bunny Hunt, when the bunnies overflowed Squidward's house, Squidward hit it with a hammer, causing it to break apart. In episode 480, Shell Games, Tony used Squidward's house as a new shell after his own shell broke. Now Squidward's house was also destroyed in an episode of season 12 that was released on the season 12 DVD before it aired on TV. That episode didn't officially premiere as of June 2021, but it is planned to air in July 2021, so I'm counting it here. This episode is episode 496, Pad Heart Squid. Here, Squidward's house tips over and it breaks into pieces. Twice. At the beginning, it falls and shatters into pieces. At the end, it happens again, but takes Patrick's house with it. Wow, that was a lot of episodes. But that was a total of 27 times Squidward's house got destroyed. Oh god, 27 times? If Squidward's house had a life of its own, I'm amazed with how much it's been through. Even the show itself knows Squidward's house has been destroyed a lot. The official YouTube channel posted a video about every time the house has been wrecked. Squidward's house is an iconic location in the series. Not just because of how much it's been through, but it just looks amazing as well. Look at this guy. In episode 240, Truth or Square, there was a parody of the Spongebob theme song that had Squidward as a title character, calling Squidward's house a monument. While this is true, I still think it's a neat little gag. This house showed a lot of kids what an Easter Island head is, since Squidward himself called it that. Squidward's house is a treasured location in the series, and it definitely deserves that right. Squidward's house is an awesome place in the show, and it's one of my personal favorites, and that's coming from somebody who loves every location in the series. It's really nice to see, with funny moments of when it has artificial intelligence, or some of the times when it got destroyed. And since Squidward's house kind of resembles Squidward himself, I'm not going to stop looking for a house that really stands out like Squidward's house does. One search later. I looked near and far and actually got lost in several neighborhoods along the way. I think I'll put an end to the search.